Hey everyone, I'm John Lynn, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today, and we're excited to bring you another in our series of interviews with top leaders in health IT. And today's guest is Erica Ko, she's project manager at Epic, and Seth Hain, SVP of R&D at Epic. Welcome. Great, thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah, excited for this discussion. Uh, before we dive into the topics today, uh, you know, Seth, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, so Seth Hain, I'm in research and development at Epic. My background was in mathematics before I came here. And for many years, I've focused on kind of the core of the software and where we embed analytics and AI into it and then surface that throughout, be it in the clinics or the hospitals or the revenue cycle products, as an example. So whole it, whole spectrum. Awesome. And Erica, how about yourself? Yeah, so I'm Erica Cole. I am a project manager at Epic on the events and design team. So. My team does any of the events that we participate in, like HIMSS. Um, so I've been here for many days prior to the show starting, getting anything, everything kicked off and getting ready for our, our guests, the attendees to visit us in the booth. Awesome, so let's talk about that. What are yeah. some of the main topics and messages that Epic is, is bringing to HIMSS 23? Yeah, so this year, um, all of it is about how we are helping clinicians um, making their work and lives easier yeah. um, and then also how we are helping health systems reduce costs and save money so that is a theme that you'll see throughout the booth we have many different feature areas but with that at the core of the things that we are, are showing and sharing with the attendees that we're welcoming into the booth yeah it sounds like you understand what hospitals are going through the two absolutely. hottest topics workforce and revenue <laughs> absolutely absolutely and you'll see that theme in you know anything from our clinician you know physician and nursing area to where we're talking about revenue cycle or even the uh, physician or excuse me patient experience it's like yeah, all of this is how do we make those clinician lives easier and help those health systems save money. Yeah, very they, important. They need help. So <laughs> we're all, it's a challenging environment right now. Indeed. Seth, what would you add from maybe the innovation and in R&D perspective? Uh, certainly one of the things folks have been stopping by to discuss has been the integration of generative AI into the applications. Yeah. And right along the lines of what Erica was talking about, our first focus was on helping physicians and nurses be more efficient with those technologies. There's a lot of opportunity to help, for example, draft a response to a message from a patient that then the physician can start, use as a starting point, edit, and decide to send off. And that's just one of many places throughout the application where you can um, see it helping folks save time and then ultimately the organization mm -hmm. saving some energy as well. Yeah, that feels like a robotic process. It makes sense why we should automate that letter that feels very similar, but needs to be personalized, right? So I, I, I want to dive into that a I, bit more. I won't, can I, yeah, can go I ahead. say one thing? Yeah. It's not truly automating it. Yeah. In this context, what we're doing is we're creating the draft to help save time. So then uh, they get a chance to review that content and send it off. We think it's important to have that human in the loop of the process. There's also some areas of the application where I do think it can help with automation, sure. but I think it's going to be important that as we integrate these technologies into our software, we keep the human touch in yeah. there as well. That is a good subtle nuance. It automates or it enhances the human that, to be able to do what they do more efficiently. Yeah. I like that nuance. Erica, what are you hearing from customers kind of leading into the event and, you know, as we start the event? Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're just excited to stop by and see what's new. Um, yeah. We see a lot of our existing customers come to the booth. They want to see old friends, um, hear what's new, see what we're working on, maybe ask some questions. Um, so that's a lot of what we hear leading up to uh, hymns, and then they also want to know. So, what are you featuring? What do you want to say? They want to know about ChatGPT. Yeah, they want to know about that exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, well, a little teaser. You're going to hear a little bit about generative AI, and of course, patient experience. And so, we've been seeing them visiting the booth to hear all of the the details to speak with our experts. We bring our um, folks from R and D, our software developers, our product leads, our implementation staff. Those are the people who are in the booth. Those are the experts, and they kind of have at their fingertips to talk about all the exciting work that we are doing, um, both, yeah, what we're currently doing and then where we're headed in the future as well. Yeah. Well, and I, that's what I hear from people that come to these conferences is it's a chance to sit down with the vendor and have that 
you know, that, that in-depth talk in, in mm -hmm. face to face. I don't, there's something different about that when you mm -hmm. get the support. Uh, so I think that's yeah. a powerful thing. And a lot of um, in our booth, we don't do these big presentations. It's, it's more of the one on one conversations, right. really kind of diving into what matters for them. What are the pain points that they're trying to solve or what are they looking forward to um, and how are they innovating and how do, can we help them reach that that vision? So. Yeah. That's yeah, an exciting time for us to make those connections. Yeah. They can get the big presentations at UGM, right? So <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So Seth, you know, you you know, we talked about ChatGPT and it, really it's all the rage. I mean, everyone here at the conference is talking about that and I mean even it, throughout our lives, let's be honest, right? Yeah. It's going to impact all sorts of things, but Epic has has said that you're looking into it in, in different ways. You mentioned one way already. Tell us a little bit more about how you're approaching this large language models, whether it's ChatGPT or other options. Yeah, and so it's important to approach it in a way that both helps save time as you're introducing it into the software, but is also cognizant of the underlying requirements from a hardware perspective. And, ulti and, and finally, that is respectful and compliant from a HIPAA perspective, mm, as well as security perspective. And so we take an approach where when there's a need for a purpose-built model, we'll develop it in-house where that makes sense and deploy it directly into the software. That might be for something like categorizing in-basket messages. That type of categorization makes a lot of sense. Where we're looking to generate more text, as an example, or kind of go to that next level, we're also collaborating very closely with folks at Microsoft in their Azure OpenAI service, okay. where there's this sort of nice synergy between AI development and AI deployment. And that also ensures that as we look across that spectrum, that that enterprise grade service can be brought to bear with the HIPAA compliance respectful of the data um, around the patient and that the security is, is there as necessary. So, in, it's like we're excited that the first few organizations, UW, um, University of Wisconsin uh -huh. in Madison, as well as UC San Diego and very shortly Stanford are live with that functionality that I s described around um, messaging earlier. Interesting. So it sounds like you're doing a bit of a mix of partner relationships and in-house uh, leveraging some, you know, you mentioned the Microsoft one, uh, you know, uh, I know there's a lot of work with Nuance with their yep. ambient clinical intelligence, which, you know, and, and I, I imagine we're going to get dozens more technologies that can be integrated. So it sounds like you're open to working with partners or integrating directly, or how do you think about that? I, I think the key is the right tool for the right job. In some cases, it might be us developing a model. In other contexts, like you mentioned, Nuance and other organizations that integrate in their voice products into our software or the work with Microsoft that I described before. And then of course, there remains the opportunity to use open standards like Smart On Fire or CDS Hooks for other applications to be integrated right alongside. And, and those might be generative AI behind the scenes as well. I don't always know, but it, 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 there's an ecosystem there of right tools for the right job. Yeah. I think the thing I love most about ChatGPT and what it's created is it's allowed us to be more imaginative of what we thought was possible <laughs> that now is possible. <laughs> it, it, it both is putting us more and more in the role of editor yeah. <laughs> and it's a great collaborator that can create hypotheses and mm. you can kind of chal be, be challenged to think in new ways with it. It's, it's yeah. a lot of fun. To, I enjoy trying it in my personal life as well. It's <laughs> Me too. And, and Erica, what, what has been the Epic's customer's response to these types of innovations and, and, and kind of Epic's announcements around this? They're excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they're they're learning a lot right now, especially with the things that Seth was talking about right now. I think there's a learning aspect to it. And Seth probably knows better exactly what they're saying. So I'll let him chime in. But I think there's a lot of excitement about about this particular technology and also the things that they're seeing in the booth that really align with, as we talked about earlier, the things that they're having challenges with right now. It's helping our clinicians making their lives easier and helping them save money. So they're they're um, also feel like we're on the same page too. So there's an excitement, but also a, like an understanding that like we've got them and we're gonna help them through this tough time. Yeah, I mean, no doubt there could be some fear from some of them. I've, I've heard some like, okay, this is exciting, but we, you know, to your point, how do we ensure that the data is kept private as we do it and other concerns like that? Yeah, I, 
in, I'm hearing a lot of excitement, but I also think it's a real opportunity for us at Epic to listen. Mm-hmm. Um, as in many, in the context around security, et cetera, we've checked those boxes and we're happy to share the messages when folks come. But as we're sharing some of the early applications that folks are deploying right now with these tools, it also sparks the imagination. And so we can sit and listen to folks that are on the front lines sharing with us where they can see it really having a bigger and bigger impact in their day-to-day life. And that's that's a great reason. And part of the reason we have so many folks in the booth directly there to listen to. Yeah, them. what a great idea. Well, are there, you know, outside of this, of course, ChatGPT is dominating so much of the conversation <laughs> and it's exciting for good reason, right? But are there other innovative projects that are being rolled out or being worked on in Epic that, you know, people, you know, are excited about? Uh, you know, obviously I don't need to break any news, but what, what's the most exciting innovation projects you're working on now? Maybe Seth, you could start. I think one of the most exciting areas is around a concept we call the health grid, mm-hmm. where there are now as part of that healthcare ecosystem, the opportunity for folks to collaborate, be it a health system or a patient with a specialty diagnostic lab or with some of the folks across the payer space, as Mm -hmm. an example, dental offices (laughs) coming in and helping close the distance between the mouth body gap that we've sort of created, Mm -hmm. um, or even including folks from the life sciences community Mm -hmm. as part of that conversation. And so, that uh, ecosystem has been something that we've sp- been spending a lot of time talking about in the booth as well. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I mean, there's so much going on. You, you know, part of the QHIN, you know, application for QHIN, you got the interoperability, you have, uh, you know, it's interesting how much is happening now. And anything else you'd add, Erica, about what you're hearing from customers that, and the innovations that they're liking mm-hmm. that you're doing? You took my answer. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of no, um, I think the other thing is that we are seeing people want to learn more about and excited about is some of the two-way SMS that we have. Mm. Um, our patient experience folks are talking about that a yeah. lot. Um, I also, genomics, you know, that's a very yeah. uh, important topic and a hot topic. We have folks wanting to stop by and understand what we're doing in the genomic space. I think um, the other thing I am hearing come up is, is rare diseases, how to connect physicians um, with patients with rare diseases and we have some um, the ability to help connect them so that they can collaborate and take better care of their patients so those are a few of the things that I'm you know hearing our different uh, folks talk about and people getting excited about so those are really some neat innovations that are um, in the works right now awesome well Erica Seth I appreciate you taking time to talk to us and Absolutely. share your insights and perspectives on what Epp is working on and of course all the innovation that's happening and thanks everyone for watching and listening If you want to find more great healthcare IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com or search for Healthcare IT Today on your favorite podcast application. Thanks a lot. Thank Thank you. you.